What were you looking for, and did you see what you wanted on the rebound day from this uh, collection of players you brought in? It was great. Um, we, this is one of the best camps I've ever been a part of, just as far as the competition level and the, um, the, the, the main thing that we preached when they came in here was that we're looking for winners, and so we, we set it up as a, a bit of a competition. We, we split them into three teams and kept the same teams the whole way, and, and the coaches worked with them and tried to build these guys into kind of mini teams as quickly and as efficiently as they could. And by the end of it in the championship game, you could see it was like a heated, like intense uh, game to where they, they really wanted to win. And that was kind of the, the culture we were trying to, to build in the camp. And these guys, they, you know, they did such a good job of, of accepting that and really like giving it their all for two days. And it was exactly kind of what we, what we were hoping it would be. And, and uh, we got a lot out of it for that reason. Obviously, Tyrus is in a different stage in his career than 20 other guys here. Based on what you guys are looking for in a, in a camp like this, is his, ex his experience a, an advantage or, or a disadvantage? I don't think it's a disadvantage for sure. I mean, I don't know if I would say it's an advantage either because I think all these guys are in the same position. Um, even though he's, he's older and, and he's, um, he's got the NBA, more of the NBA, um, like he's he's tasted the NBA, so he's trying to get back. These other guys, they see it and they want to get there. But I think they're all in the same position in that they're not in the league, and, and the goal is to get there. And, and they'll put themselves in front of the teams as much as they can to to just you know to to make that next step. And I think with him, the fact that he's he knows what it's like to be in the league, he can probably share a lot of his experience with the guys around here. And but in the same way, he's he's trying to do the same thing that they are. Like they're they're not much different, other than you know he's he's had a little bit more of the glory than those guys. You spoke a lot about learning from mistakes and, and growing, it, and you kind of touched on that yesterday with a lot of these guys sort of maturing even yep. in, even in a year. Um, how much is that kind of age and, and, and having been through it, especially at a young age like he was? Um, how, how important is that just in terms of growing it? Not only, not only as a player but as a person. Um, say that again. Like, like I guess, like to, you, to, to have that experience of having gone through it and made mistakes, and sort of trial and error, to to be at this position now where he's looking at this opportunity in a different way. Yeah, I think I think that I mean, there's so many players in the league that are successful who didn't didn't have the traditional path in, and a lot of those guys that make it that way. I mean, usually they're they're high character guys from going through the the different trials and errors of getting to where they are today. And, you know, he, he's along that same path, like you, you get a little bit maybe too early and you don't know how to handle it and you don't know what to, um, how to be a professional yet. And, and then you, you kind of get knocked down and then now it's coming the way back. And there's a lot of guys that have gone through that and because of that they become such better professionals and human beings and, and they just, they learn how to how to handle their money better, how to how to handle the, the people around them better, and just kind of take care of their, like who they are, I guess, more so than just a basketball player. And I think it takes sometimes like hard knocks to, to learn that. And I think, you know, whether, whether he's going through that now or, or not, I'm not sure, but there are a lot of guys who, who do, they, they kind of hit rock bottom and then they, they work themselves back up and it's, usually like for a much better, like they get to a higher point than they were before they got knocked down. That maturation process, how much can it help a guy when he grows and starts to develop a sense of self-awareness and able just to acknowledge his mistakes and you know, admit what he's done wrong? I, you know, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I haven't been in that position. It's hard to say, to speak for these guys, but I'm sure that just, um, you know, staying, staying professional with it and, and, and sticking to the process and keeping your goals and it, it builds a lot of character, and I think that it's um, it teaches these guys like how badly do they really want this? Like, is is the goal of the NBA worth all the work that they're putting in, and like traveling all the way around the world and and really chasing this dream? Like, is it is it worth it? And the guys that stick with it, and the guys that that really like put in their all, I mean, those are the guys that yeah they they get a lot out of it, and they become you know not just good basketball players, but great you know, people with it too, yeah. Jordan Baczynski said his agent said the read on him was he was soft and that he had to change that. Um, and is he, did, did you believe that? And is he doing enough in these camps to change that read on him? 
I that wasn't a, a read on him that we had. Yeah, I mean, I think with him, it's um, coming out of college. It was you know he was a shot blocker, and, and that was about it. And, and I think um, he's proving that he actually has some offensive game as well. You know, he's still he's so, he's so big and he runs the floor well, to where. Um, He's proving that he's more than just the, the defensive, the guy that he was in college. And I, I don't think we'd ever, we ever really saw him as a soft player. Um, he's definitely, um, he's proving in, in his camp, he proved that he can bang with anybody and, and he can take the hits and he can, and he can um, dole them out just as much. And, and I think, yeah, if, if that is a wrap on him, like he didn't show it at all. You guys have your notes on what you, uh, kind of perceived as, as the weaknesses for a lot of these guys the first time you saw them and, and what their rap is around the league. How much of this process has to do with sort of determining how much they've they've improved in those areas and how much they've learned from from those weaknesses? That's a that's a big part of it. Is like you said, we have we have you know notes and notes and notes on these guys, and we keep track of you know why didn't they make it the first time and and. You know, like a jump shot, like has their jump shot improved? So, I mean, we're sitting sitting here, like breaking down all the mechanics and, and different things like that to see, like, has it has it gotten any better? And, you know, it's it's all across the board of the different things that that kept these guys out of the league for, you know, for the last couple of years, because we tried to bring in guys that were all kind of right on the cusp of the NBA. And there's just something that's keeping them out for some reason or, or a reason why they didn't get drafted or you know, just the, the one or two different different flaws in their game, if you will. And so that's kind of our, our, our job and our goal of our coaches even is to kind of look at these guys through a, a little bit of some stained glass to where it's like, okay, if we can, you know, iron out these wrinkles, like, is there a player here? And then when they come in in the draft process, you get a good look at what those wrinkles are. And then again here, like, you kind of see, like, are they smoothing out? Are they getting a little better? And, and can we put the finishing touches on it and have ourselves a player. So there's a, there's a lot of the, um, I wouldn't really call it critiquing, but definitely a lot of um, just like checking if, if they're improving in the, in the areas that we expect them to. Jeremy Tyler's a guy with an intriguing skill set and he continues to draw attention from NBA teams. Yeah. Your take on what this young big man can do? He's, he's a, a, a great example of, like I said, the guys that are on the cusp. I mean, he's, he's been in the league and He's always just right there. He's, he's so big and physically talented and, you know, he rebounds, he can score. He, he does just about everything that you want a big man to do. And it's really, I mean, a lot of the, the things with guys like him, it's just a matter of fit. You know, can he, can he find the right team? Can, um, can he get to a situation where, you know, the way the cards fall, like it's his, it's his turn, you know, and, and then he actually gets a real shot in real games. And it's just a matter of, you know, coaching staff like kind of believing in him and going, but he's he's without question t more talented enough to be in the league. It's just you know a matter of um, of the timing working out for him. And I think with him too, he's still young. You know, I mean he's he's been a pro for a number of years, but he's been doing it for such a long time too that you forget how young he still is. So I mean he's he's got time ahead of him too to find the right fit. But that's all that's kept him out so far. Yeah, I know you've been asked about the Scrub Brothers before, but can you tell me after day two here what you've seen of them and, and have they progressed since they've been here? Uh, I mean, it's hard to say like how they progress in two days, but I, I mean, they, they were impressive in, in the fact that they, I mean, they're the two guys that haven't been playing professional basketball in this camp and they more than held their own against the other guys. Um, I, I don't know if they're the youngest guys in here, but they're definitely two of the youngest guys. and you couldn't tell, you know, the, the way that they, they approach the game and, and, and um, just approach these two days, like all around, it was just very professional. And they, um, they're gonna be great players, you know, whether it's in the NBA, overseas, wherever, like they're gonna be, um, they're gonna be just fine because of the way that they, they approach it as, as people and, and, and as players. Uh, this is, I think I said yesterday, like this is like entirely for the summer league. Like it's, um, it's the type of thing where, like I've been talking to their agents for, you know, a couple months now. And before we wanted to commit anybody to summer league, we wanted this as an opportunity to have our coaches like really get to work with these guys and see who, who they feel comfortable with as far as 
um, players that they would want putting around our young guys. Because um, I mean, our, I, I feel like our, our young guys are at a point where we really want to see their development throughout the next, you know, summer and then and then in the next season as well. To where it, this is a pretty, a pretty important summer league for like making sure that they have the right guys around them, um, just so that they can be successful. So this was kind of good timing for us to hold a, a camp like this, just to really, really get a feel for the the right group of guys to 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 put around Bruno and Lucas and uh, DeAndre and that those types of guys. So it's going to be. Um, it's going to be a very uh, a very helpful process to now like get back in touch with the agents and like now we have a good baseline for what we're looking for and it should make a lot of these uh, commitments coming up much easier